So before you choose a paperless solution, it's important to make sure that your paperless tools do at least some of the following things. First, you don't want to reinvent your workflow just because you want to go paperless. The things, the tools, the services, the applications that you use should fit very naturally into you how already work, instead of you having to completely shift how you work around them. Also, and this is a challenge for a lot of people that I work with, if you're scared of technology, you should be able to still use these tools. It should be easy for you to get your papers into your computer, whether you use a desktop scanner, or it should be easy for you to use and access the website that lets you access your documents if you use one of these services or applications. So regardless of how you like to organize or how organized you are or how comfortable you are with technology, you should feel comfortable with the service or tool that you choose. Another important thing to consider is that most of us have both electronic documents that live on our computer, whether they're emails that we were sent or things that we've created, in addition to paper-based documents that have come in through the mail or things that we collected with clients or vendors or at meetings. Any paperless tool that you choose should let you merge both of those worlds. What we don't want are two separate systems, two islands of information, one paper and one electronic. Ideally, we want to try to combine the two as much as possible so that when you're going to access your information, you don't have to look in two separate spots. Also, you want to be able to choose how your docs get into the system. So whether that's a scanning system that you use or an online application or tool, you want to have control over whether you email in your documents, whether you scan them, whether you drag and drop from your own computer into the database or into their application, whether you send things in through the mail or whether you take snapshots on your phone. You want to have a variety of ways to get your stuff in. You don't want to be locked down to just one method. Now this is really, really important. When we get things on our computer, one of the main strengths of getting them there is that we're able to search for things, just like we search for things on the internet. So you want to make sure that your paperless solution does what's called OCR, or optical character recognition. And this is where, during the scanning process, the scanning tool, whether that's your scanner on your desk or the service that you use, scans through your document looking for text. And as it sees text, it recognizes it and makes it searchable. This is how later when things either live on your computer or on the service itself, this is how you're able to search for things that you need and find them when you need them. So make sure that any tool you choose does what's called OCR or optical character recognition. A few more things to look for. You should be able to organize things however you want. And this is something that I believe for whatever system you choose, whether that's for your storage or for your time, but especially for your paper because it's so detailed, it's really important that you're able to organize things how you think about them. So you should be able to create whatever categories or tags or labels or folders that make sense for you because you're the one who needs to be able to access your information. You don't want to be locked into some sort of paradigm that doesn't make sense for you, whether that's a file structure or a naming scheme or some system that doesn't really speak to how you think. You should be able to tailor the system to your needs. Obviously, it's very important if you're using a paper solution to be able to search for your stuff. If you've decided to go paperless, you're going to want to be able to search for and look for things on your computer or on the online database that you choose. So make sure that there's good searching and sorting tools available. Important also is once you go paperless, it's likely that you're going to be much more apt to share your documents with other people because you won't have to send them out through the physical mail anymore or fax them or send them via courier or any of those other methods. You're likely to be able to just send an email or even from within some of these online tools, you just click the share button, put in the person's email address, and then they receive a copy of the document. So make sure that any tool that you choose lets you do that. And typically one of the strengths of the online versions of many of the paperless solutions is that you have access from any computer anywhere that has a web or internet connection, even from a smartphone. So if you're going to choose one of these online tools, make sure that you feel confident that you'll have access from wherever you happen to be whenever you want to access your stuff. 
And finally, regardless if you choose an online tool or an offline tool like a scanner, you want to make sure that all of your data gets backed up regularly. And by regularly, I mean all the time, not just once a month or last week, but really daily is best. If you're keeping important information on your computer, it's essential that you back it up all the time. So if you're keeping your scanned docs that you used uh, your own personal scanner to scan on your computer, make sure that you have an effective backup system installed on your computer. Conversely, if you're using an online tool, make sure you've checked out what the company's data security is, what their privacy policies are, and what their backup situation is. You want to make sure that you feel comfortable with who is hosting and storing your data. So how do you get started? There's many ways to get started, and it's best, I've found, to not try to go paperless all in one fell swoop. That can be pretty overwhelming. So instead, I encourage you to start with whatever is really bothering you. Is it the documents that you're archiving? Are you having trouble finding things when you need them that are in your file cabinets? Is it really a problem of managing your expenses and your receipts? Are you getting things in a timely manner to your bookkeeper or your CPA or your expense department? Is it faxes? Are you really overwhelmed by receiving lots of faxes or sending faxes? Or maybe it's keeping track of all the things that you've scribbled down on post-it notes or on the backs of envelopes. What is it that's really bothering you? Figure out what that is and then start there. And once you've done that, then you can really figure out what your specific goals are for that piece of the project. So it could be simply reducing the amount of paper that you have around. So maybe your goal is instead of having two large file cabinets that you have only one, Maybe it's that you want to reduce the overall amount of paper that you see in your space. Maybe you don't want to see any papers on your desk other than the ones that you're actually working on. Or maybe it's that you want to reduce the amount of time that you're spending processing through a specific task or searching for particular types of documents. Figure out specifically what your goal is for the project before you get started. Really important. Before you start, scanning documents yourself or before you stuff an envelope and send them off to get scanned by a service, it is absolutely essential to edit through the papers that you have, really weed through and get rid of what you don't need, use, access, or want because you don't want to waste time and or money having things scanned that you don't really need. So although it can be not the most fun part of the process, I really believe it's essential to really take some time and parse through your documents and make sure that you're only having scanned the things that you really want. Also, another step here is you can identify which things are truly archival, which I term cold storage, and which are really active, things that you're really working on. You may want to start by having scanned the things that are more archival so that you're not completely interrupting your workflow and having the things that you're working on today scanned. You might want to do that a little later after you've gotten more into the paperless habit. So often it's easier to identify and categorize the things that are archival, get those scanned first, and then move on and start scanning the things that are coming in the door. A few pitfalls to avoid. It's not, not all rainbows and puppies in the world of scanning and going paperless. There are some things to know, some things that can go wrong. Hopefully they won't for you. Keep these in mind. First, have realistic expectations for what you can hope to accomplish. As I mentioned, going paperless does not mean going paper free. You will never be completely free of paper, at least I don't think in our lifetimes, because we still print things out, people will still give things to you, mail will still come in, you'll still collect stuff. You'll probably be able to collect a lot less paper, or you might be able to deal with it a lot more quickly, but you'll still be touching paper at some point. If you're working with multiple other people, you're going to want to make sure that you get your team on board. Make sure that everyone understands why you're going paperless or reducing paper. Make sure they understand what the benefits are and also what the challenges might be, what to watch out for. And make sure that they understand their role in the process. Are they the ones that are going to be doing the data checking? Are they the ones that are going to be doing the scanning? Will they be the ones that go to the online service and make sure that all the documents got there? What is the
they're specific, they're all on the same page before you implement a solution. Also, if you started doing the paperless option and you find that you're getting a little tired of it or it's just not working that well, I encourage you to stick with it a little bit longer. Like anything that's worth doing, going paperless is a habit. And believe me, for most of us, it's something that is brand new. So like any habit, it requires some changes. And changes can be painful and tricky at first, but they get easier over time. So as you're building your paperless muscle, it can be a little bit painful, but you'll get used to it and then things will be a lot better. So stick with it for a while. If you feel like it's not working right away, it probably isn't. It's going to take you a while to get used to it. So give it a shot, stick with it for a bit, and then try to evaluate how it's working for you after a month or two. One thing that going paperless won't do is take away all of the tasks that are associated with paper. Most papers, just like emails, represent things that you need to do. So even though you get the papers onto your computer and you don't see them in your space anymore when you go paperless, typically there will still be action items associated with those documents. So going paperless doesn't wave the magic wand and make all of the things that you need to do go away. It can make certainly some of them easier, but you'll still have things that you need to do, actions you need to take, tasks that you need to follow up on. And finally, again, there will always be some paper in your world. It's not going to happen, I don't think, for a while that we're going to completely get rid of paper. So just expect that there'll still be some stuff that comes in. So that sums up getting started going paperless and what's in it for you and some pitfalls to avoid. The next webinar that we'll be doing is a set of online and offline tools that will help you master your paperless office. So I'll be talking specifically about <coughs> services and applications that I've used myself and that I've implemented with clients, ones that I really believe in and have used. I'll talk specifically about how to put them to use and how they can benefit you. And rather than just show you the whiz-bang cool features, I'm going to give you some real money and time-saving examples for how you can use them right away in your own businesses and in your own lives.